Most welcome to the Afghans region, which is the network of opportunities for Afghan students and international students. Uh, following the series of sessions we had for the Dada Scholarship, today we are having a honorable guest, uh, Madia Ahmadi, who is a current Chevening Scholar. However, she was selected for the Dada Scholarship as well to um, guide us on how to fill the forms for the DAD scholarship and how to apply for the uh, relevant scholarship that you are aiming for. Um, now I'm uh, honored to give the, um, the talk to Madiha to introduce herself better and to start um, and, um, giving information about the process of DAD scholarship. Madiha John. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so this is Madiha Ahmadi. I'm from Afghanistan and uh, I was awarded the EAD uh, scholarship on um, for the year of 2021 20, to 2022, but because uh, at the same time I got two scholarships. So I withdrew my scholarship with the EAD and I uh, accepted, I took up my achieving scholarship. But uh, as I was an awardee before, so I can uh, I can give you some some guidance about DAD. But please um, please consider that DAD has a lot of programs. It depends on which country you are from and uh, which re which what's your major or what's your field of study. So I'm going to introduce or give guidance about the DAD HSP, which is Helmut Schmidt program. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly because it's a German name and it is uh, the major or the, the field of study is about uh, public policy and good governance which is also called PPGG. Uh, uh, it is uh, stated for public policy and good governance. So I will be calling this one DAD HSP PPGG. The name is a bit, uh, a bit difficult to pronounce actually but I hope I can pronounce it correctly. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, uh, so you have to go to the DED website. Uh, I have this one opened in my browser right now. Uh, if we start from the beginning, so just simply Google and write DED PPGG 2022 and go to the first uh, option that you have. This is the of official website of DAD. So DAD stands for German Academic Exchange Service. I can't read the, the German name, <laughs> it's the translation. And uh, yes, yeah, so you will get uh, all of the guidance that you need for this program. And at the end of, if you don't wanna read it for online from the website, at the end of this page, you have a PDF, which you can download it and read whatever you want, whatever guidance you want about. Uh, it's worth to mention that the DPPGG scholarship starts every year on 1st of June and it, uh, it closes down on uh, the last day of July. So it's open for two months every year and it's accepting applications for uh, every year. Uh, but some of the universities, they offer the scholarship or the, uh, the program, the master's programs are for two years, and some of them offer for just one year. Uh, basically, only eight universities are uh, included in the PPGG program, uh, not more than that. So you have to select between those eight, like you have a limited uh, options. You have to select uh, from those eight universities. And also they offer, some of them offer just one or two programs, master programs, and some of them offer only one master program. So you have to be very much focused on the major that you are going to study. And you have a limited options. You have to choose only from that, uh, that described uh, majors and also the universities. Okay, so starting from the objectives of this program, uh, you can read through the objectives. Uh, it is to enhance the good governance and public policy um, in the countries like, like my country, Afghanistan and other developing countries. And the target group is uh, that uh, you need to uh, have a first university degree, like bachelor degree, mostly. And uh, then you can apply for a master's degree, of course, uh, which is called undergrad degree in, in the UK. Uh, and 
it's a full funded scholarship you um because the german the public universities in germany they are uh, tuition fee free so uh, neither DAD nor yourself are going to pay for the tuition fee but DAD is going to pay for your accommodation for your living expenses so you don't need to exp uh, like uh, you don't need to spend your own money you will get paid for this scholarship and you can study free in the uh, universities that are listed below uh, and there is a contact and advice that you can go through. So these are the list of universities that uh, offering the um, the courses. This is just eight. I think it it was eight in my time. It it, it might be uh, more than that or less than that. And my university was University of Paso. I uh, my major was Master of Governance and Public Policy. But Paso offers two programs. Uh, one of them is Deplo Development Studies, and the other one is Master of Governance and Public Policy. So uh, please note that uh, some of these universities, they taught in German, uh, not all of them are in English. So if you're uh, considering applying for this scholarship, please uh, check the websites and the program of, uh, that, that are listed here in this page before applying for the uh, for those universities or before selecting those universities. If you're fluent in German, then you can study that. But if you're not, uh, you have to study in English. Uh, actually, the DAD program offers a, a German language course before the start of your uh, master's program. But you have to get a B2, which is the uh, professional level of German language, if you are if your course is in German. So it's mandatory to get B2. Otherwise, if you have been awarded this scholarship, your scholarship will no longer uh, be in its place. Uh, because uh, if you, if you don't get the B2 or the of uh, the professional level of German language to study your course. Uh, I suggest that if you are not fluent in German, so don't apply for the universities and courses that are taught in German. Apply for the ones that are taught in English. And moving forward, so this uh, in this file, you have a description of every university and the courses that uh, are the programs that, are off, that the, uh, they are offering. So you can go through this one. Uh, of course, there should be uh, information about the language and the duration of the course. Some of them one year, some of them two years. Mine was for two years. And uh, yeah, at the end of this uh, file, so you can go through all the information about the courses and the universities. You have contact lists for each of them. And this is the end of uh, this guidance. Basically, this is my own application uh, for 2021 to 2023. So what, uh, what you need to have in your application is the DAD blue form. It is, uh, it's famous uh, by the name of blue form because you have another uh, DAD form, which is a green one. I don't actually know the major difference between them, but when you are an applicant before, uh, before getting awarded this scholarship, you have to fill out the blue form. And uh, when you get this scholarship, uh, you will need to um, fill out the, the green form at that time. And those processes will be led by, by DED itself and you will be guided if you if you are awarded a DED scholarship uh, later this year. Uh, so the first uh, item that you, you need to have in your application is the DED form. I, uh, you have uh, English translations of every part here. So you don't you want to struggle if you don't know German. Uh, and then you need to tick uh, whatever program you're going to study or you're going to apply, because this is a general form for all the programs uh, of DED scholarship. So you're going to apply for Helmut Schmidt program, public policy and good governance. You have to write it here. In the second page, there's a photo of yourself, uh, your personal information, where are you from, your date of birth, name, a last name, 
and uh, where do you live? What is your uh, highest degree that you have achieved so far? Your permanent address, uh, the information about your previous education, about your high school, your secondary school, about your university. And uh, also, uh, this is the, the information that you have, uh, you have to give to DED about your education, your previous education in your own country. In the third page, you have to give some information about which universities are you going to apply. So in this part, I would like to mention that um, you can apply for two universities which are listed in uh, the list that I have shown uh, just a, a few minutes before. You can choose two universities uh, among, uh, among that eight universities list. And uh, you have to mention these two universities and two programs in your personal statement. So you can be awarded for two of them or just one of them or none of them. These are the options. And uh, it's worth to mention that you're not going to apply for directly to DED. You're going to apply to the universities. You're sending the same application, uh, almost the same application to two of universities that you have selected. And then uh, you will get contacted by the universities. Uh, the universities will interview you uh, if, if your application is uh, successful. And then they will forward all, your, all of your information if you are selected after the interview to DED, then you will get contacted by DED. So the process is you are applying for the uh, universities right now, not the DED. Uh, you have to write the information about your universities and uh, um, what, what programs have you chosen for, uh, for studying. Some of the, some parts of this form is not, up, it was not applicable for me actually, uh, um, depends on which country you are from. So please go through the form um, deeply and uh, if it's applicable for you, try to fill it out. And uh, information about your languages that you know, um, any additional information that you normally include in your CV, so you can include it here, uh, your work experience, and uh, yeah, and I think you would need um, some uh, the contact information of someone from your family for emergency purposes, and then you have to sign, you have to date it and sign it and write the place. That is it about the farm. Moving forward to the personal statement or statement of purpose. So this is basically my uh, personal statement. It shouldn't exceed two pages because uh, DAD or the universities does not give you instruction about the wording, like how, the, the limitation of how many words you should use, but you, uh, they're giving guidance about the pages. It shouldn't exceed two pages. Uh, there are a lot of guidance about uh, how to write a personal statement or a statement of purpose. Uh, you can simply Google it and um, you can watch videos on YouTube also, whatever you are comfortable with. So you can get guidance on how to write a personal statement. Uh, for myself, in the first paragraph, I uh, introduced myself and why I'm apply applying for this program. What is my previous background in terms of my education and work experience? Uh, what are, uh, like, if you have any, uh, if you have done any volunteering um, activity before and whatever, you think that might be relevant to uh, that, that, that supports your application to get shortlisted. In the second paragraph, uh, I have written about why I want to study in Germany, because you have to be clear in your personal statement. Like uh, there are at least four or five uh, countries that, that they have almost a similar level of education. So why you are going to choose Germany, not, not UK, not US, not Canada, um, you have to be clear about that and try to make it relevant to the field or the major that you are, or your program that you're going to do your master's degree, if you can. And, uh, okay, so moving forward, um, you have to be clear about why you're, uh, you're applying for this scholarship, like what, what is this scholarship is going to contribute to your education or your um, 
goals in the future, uh, you have to give them reasons that why you are applying for this scholarship. And then after that, you have to uh, tell them that why you are choosing these courses and these universities. You have two options. You have to uh, make it like you have to state it very, very clearly which one is your first option. My first option was uh, the uh, University of Paso Governance and Public Policy because of my relevant background. And my second option was the MA Development and Governance at University of Duisburg Essen. I didn't get any offer from Duisburg Essen. It was rejected, but I got my offer from Paso. So as I said before, you can get two offers or just one or none. But you have to be clear about your first choice and second choice, and you have to give them reasons why you are choosing this university and why you are doing this, uh, why you want to do um, study this program. You have to be clear with that. That is the uh, the part of your personal statement that stands uh, that make you stand out uh, between all the applicants. So you have to be clear uh, enough. And apart from that, you have to write about your future plans. During your scholarship years, what you want to do, what volunteer activities maybe you, you would like to do in Germany or for your university or for the community, because the community is uh, investing on you. They are paying for you to study free. So if you want to do any volunteer activities, you can write them down. Um, and also your plan, your short, mid and long term plan. Uh, what you want to do after this degree. This, this should be very, very clear because this is the, uh, a crucial part of the personal statement. They, they would like to know that how this uh, program is going to contribute to your uh, studies, uh, to, to your future after this program. So you have to be clear what you want to do after this program. And a conclusion sentence that why you're a potential candidate. That's it. You have to write your name at the end, like how you do in, in normal uh, writing an email and then sign it. This is my CV. You have to include a two pages or a maximum three pages CV. Uh, how normally you make your CV just, uh, you can, attach as a normal CV that you apply for jobs. So after your CV, you need to um, attach your, uh, you need to sign your CV as well. And you need to attach your education documents starting from high school or secondary school, whatever it is uh, in your country. For me, it's high school, which is 12 years. And then uh, after that, your um, first bachelor degree or first uh, university degree. This is my education certificate, my bachelor degree certificate, my transcripts. And then I did a one year non-degree program after my bachelor's degree. So I have included that one as well. And at the end, this is my IELTS score. Thank you so much for the um, comprehensive information about the DAD scholarship and how to uh, fill the forms and uh, apply for the relevant Schmidt, uh, Helmut Schmidt scholarship. Uh, however, the, there are some certain points uh, that may, may confuse uh, uh, viewers in terms of language first. Um, while many people who they are not having any German certificate, neither an English certificate, and, and as the that scholarship is providing six month or four month of uh, la uh, German language preparation, do the do the still are able to apply to that scholarship without any uh, language certificate, uh, whether in English or German? In any way, uh, that scholarship is providing them a four or six months uh, language course. Yes, as I said, uh, they can apply, but they have to uh, get the agreement of the university because, first of all, they are going to apply for the university. They have to reach out to university and ask them if they can apply without any language score, um, either it's German or English. And then uh, the language course is mandatory for everyone who, uh, if you're doing your course in English or German, if you get selected or if you get the DED, HSP PPGG award, you have to do the six months um, language course before starting your master's degree, it's mandatory. 
for me, it was online in my home country because of the pandemic, but for, uh, normally it's in Germany. So you have to travel uh, around April or May to Germany and start your course. And you will get paid for the course as well. If you're doing the, the course in German, at the end of the six months or four months, uh, it depends on the year, um, uh, whatever DAD decides, depending on, on different years, you have to uh, do an official test of German language. I don't know the exact name, like we do IELTS or TOEFL uh, in English and get the score before starting your course, get the B2 level uh, official language score or the, the, that level, uh, the professional level, so you can start your course. Uh, and if the university agrees, if you're doing the course in English and your university agrees that you can uh, give your score or uh, provide your score after the application. So it depends on uh, the time interval that the university agrees with you. If they're saying before getting the award, or before starting your master's degree. So try to be clear with the university because uh, you have to uh, provide the English uh, language score eventually. Uh, just ask the university how much time you have after the application to get your, um, to set, um, take the IELTS exam and then get your score. In terms of uh, the degree requirements, while some of Afghan students, for instance, they are having a three years degree from, from India, for instance, if they study social science or, or economical studies in India, they are, uh, their course periods are three years, while back in Afghanistan, it's four years. And it is mandatory for some scholarships that the, they require to have a full four degrees, uh, full four years of your bachelor degree. Is it a requirement for that scholarship or it doesn't require anything like that? You only need to have a bachelor degree. Uh, it's not a requirement for, for the EAD. Uh, so the EAD requires you to have a bachelor degree, whatever it is, it's three years or four years. But before applying to this scholarship, you have to check all the requirement of the course or the program that you're applying on the university's website. For example, I applied for Paso University, Good Governance, uh, Public Policy and Good Governance. So I went to the website of Paso University and the exact program, and I checked all the requirements. So you will find the requirements about your degree, about the language score, everything in the website. I uh, During the explanation of uh, the guidance, I told you that, I told the viewers that uh, you have to go to through the website of the, scholar, the university that you're, you have selected, and you have to read through every information that you need, and you should apply accordingly. Uh, in terms of uh, the documents to uh, upload for the relevant university. We, we have seen there was a form for the relevant university as well as a personal statement along with the CV, relevant documents. Uh, however, and, and as well as the uh, English requirement. However, there wasn't any recommendation letters. Is it a requirement for the Dallas scholarship and the relevant university to provide recommendation letters or reference letters as part of the application or, or it's not required? Again, it depends on the university and the program that you're doing. Some of the universities, they require the recommendation letter and some of them, they don't require. So read through the information on the website if they require, so you have to provide them recommendation letters. You uh, Normally it is because one of the universities, which is Duisburg Essen, uh, they required me to uh, provide them a recommendation letter. I provided the email of my professor and then the, my professor uh, sent the, the recommendation letter through email. So they normally require you to uh, give them an, an email of your professor, your academic reference or um, or maybe professional, depends on the program and the university, how you agree with the university. And then you can send them the email and they will provide you, uh, your professor or your uh, professional uh, reference, whoever um, she or he is, they can provide you a recommendation letter. India was a specific format for the CV. Uh, do, they, do the applicants require to 
uh, have their CV on a specific format, which is provided by university or that and on their website, or they are free to have any uh, format of CV they, they wish for and, and which specific information they are required to include on their CVs. Is there any difference between the academic CV or professional CV that they should point out or, or, or should note for the DAD scholarship? Uh, well, there is no requirement and no special format to uh, have your CV on it. So it is just my own prepared CV that I uh, normally used it for applying uh, for vacancies back home. Uh, and it's, um, you can prepare your CV in whatever format you want. There is no requirement, but it is suggested to use the Euro, uh, European CVs format, which is uh, available on Google. Uh, again, if you're comfortable, you can do your CV yourself. Uh, there's no requirement of a special format. The most important part, which is, I think, uh, very much valuable for, for those who are trying to apply for this scholarship is the personal statement or application later on how to structure that better and how to uh, focus on the main points which catch the eyes of those who are reviewing it. What are the main things they should consider on their uh, application or application form or personal statement to catch the eyes and, and uh, to uh, make them uh, succeed in this process? Uh, so uh, I explained a couple of points. Uh, your introduction uh, in the personal statement is very important because that's the first paragraph. Uh, the reader or the admission officer is going to read the first paragraph and judge you based on that. To go through all the personal statement or not, uh, you have to take care that it does not exceed uh, with a lot of information uh, and it does not exceed like two pages. It should be very clear, concise and um, understandable for a person. Uh, who is uh, an admission officer. So don't use a lot of technical uh, terminology. Try to be as much clear and as much concise as you can. Uh, try to make it relevant to the program that you're applying and um, to the university. What are the requirements of the university? Try to be clear about your background, your education and, and work experience background and also try to be clear whatever extracurricular activities you have done before. Uh, and then uh, you can write about why you're studying in Germany. So you have to be clear uh, about this one. You have to give them reasons. And uh, as I said before, you have to be clear about your options, uh, whatever university you have chosen for your first option and for your second option. Uh, this is very important. Also give reasons why you have chosen this university, why not any other university. You can find all this information on the website of each university. So you have to do your research, your extensive research on the websites uh, and about the university, about the course, the program that you are going to do, and then include it in your um, personal statement. Don't copy paste the information. You have to go through the, all the information and then get whatever you like uh, to uh, including your personal statement. Apart from that, you can give them reasons why you're applying for this scholarship because there are many scholarships uh, that you can study abroad and you can do uh, on this specific, this public policy and development. So why you are going to uh, choose this uh, scholarship? Is there any specific reason or not? And then at the end of your personal statement, you have to be clear about your future plans. What are your future goals and how this scholarship program or the program, the study program that you're going to do is going to contribute uh, to your future goals. This is very, very important. So uh, try to be clear in every paragraph of your personal statement. Uh, don't use um, jargons or some very wordy sentences. Try to be as simple as uh, as you normally speak and write in English and try to be clear. Thank you so much, uh, Madia John. It's really comprehensive information that you have provided. Uh, the other question is about the um, job experience requirement. Is there any 
a specific requirement of having job experience on its duration uh, or being relevant to what you are aiming for to, to study or to, to be relevant to your um, field of education. And, and if someone is not uh, having a relevant degree that they are wishing for, but still they are having a relevant job experience on, on that uh, a specific field that they are wishing to apply for, is it still possible to, to go for it? Uh, and, and what is your overall view on this? Uh, so it depends, again, it depends on the university and uh, what program you're going to choose. Uh, some of those universities, they require, and some of the programs, they require one year of work experience, relevant work experience, and some of them uh, two years. Uh, but uh, it depends on which country you are from and how your education and work experience is valued um, for, a, for an admission officer in Germany. It depends on that. For example, like one year work experience from my home country uh, cannot be acceptable for them, actually, because uh, the, the, the level of work experience is a little bit low for my home country. And the level of our education is not equivalent to what, um, to what we study um, a degree in the UK or maybe Germany or uh, the Western countries or maybe US. Uh, it depends on country, first. Uh, second, uh, some of the universities, they require the work experience. Some of them don't. And um, uh, the duration is different, maybe one year or two years. And then if you are not from the same field, maybe if your education is not from the same uh, subject matter, uh, you have the real, but you have relevant work experience, this can be considered. It, it doesn't have any problem. If the admission officer feels that you have, um, you can carry on with this master's degree and you can be uh, a, successful, a successful student in the future and you have uh, your work experience or your education is equivalent to a bachelor's degree or undergraduate degree in Germany that you can continue a master's degree so it will be acceptable for them. It depends on the situation of everyone, every applicant. Uh, but you can try applying if you have the relevant work experience or if you have the relevant education. Thank you so much, Madia John. In terms of the university percentages, is that also important for the Dodd scholarship and overall university? Are they considering the percentage of percentage and grade of your university results, or it is not required? Even those with the low percentage of university degree can go for it. I can say that you can apply uh, with a middle percentage, not very, very low, but if it is an average law, that would be okay. They don't require you to, to, um, to have a first degree or to be a topper in your university. Uh, it's not a requirement, actually. You can apply with um, whatever, whatever percentage you have in your um, previous degrees because it uh, it is actually calculated differently. It uh, depends on your education system. Uh, in your home country, and then the, the admission officer is going to calculate it according to uh, according to the equivalency of that uh, percentage to Germany, but uh, to German um, education system. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a good question. I forgot to mention before that you have to uh, attach, not in your application, but you have to send them through email, uh, a, a description of the education system. Uh, and how you, your uh, grades are in your home country. So they can have a clear understanding of uh, the education system in your home country and they can calculate the equivalency of your uh, degree according to the requirements that they have. Thank you so much. And, and a, a last question regarding the attach, attaching relevant certificates and documents there. Um, friends that they have relevant, uh, they have participated on the relevant workshops, trainings, and programs, and they have relevant training, training and workshop certificates. It is worth it to uh, attach those certificates along with your application, or it is not required, or there is no place to attach them, or do you think it will add any value to your application? Uh, I think it's not required if it's not a degree certificate or uh, a long-term program. Uh, 
So if it's not uh, accepted as a as an education program, uh, you have to attach only the degree degree certificates and your transcripts. I attached a one year non degree program because it was for one year long. It was very much relevant to uh, to the program that I was uh, applying for, uh, but it was non degree. Of course, it was a postgraduate certificate. I, I attached that one, uh, but if you have uh, certificates from normal workshops or uh, seminars, you don't have to attach, you don't have to uh, exceed the like um, 15 pages or seven pages uh, in your application. But also it's worth mentioning that the application process to every university is different. For example, in some universities, uh, you can apply online. They have a, an application portal. You can attach every document. You can fill out forms online, but some of them, they require you to send your uh, documents through email. It again depends on the university and the program. So you have to do this research on the website as well, how they're um, wanting you to apply for the for the program. If it is like for me, Paso University was uh, through an application portal. It was online, but the uh, Duisburg Essen University was through the email. So I sent them the application through the email, making it PDF. Um, but uh, you have to find this one and then don't attach whatever certificate you have. If it's a degree certificate, then that's okay. Thank you so much, Madi Hajan, for your time and providing comprehensive information about the DAL scholarship and especially the Hel Helm Schmidt uh, part of the DOT scholarship on how to apply and, and uh, you, your answers for the relevant question are really uh, appreciated uh, for all the viewers of this video. I wish you best of luck and please continue to uh, view our videos in the Afghan's Vision website and uh, try to subscribe uh, our, our channel for future videos. And if you have any comment, question, uh, please come back to us by um, posting comment on the bottom of this video.